Hey, we're back. Okay. We'll do some tactics that I got a game from uh, uh, Hakaro Nakamura. And uh, we'll go over that. I'm just going to pull this up so I got it. <clears throat> then I have the page. Let's see, check there, and check there, check, and uh, we pick up a piece. So here. Ooh, okay. Okay. I'm still clueless. What did I? I still want to check our idea out because I think that idea still works. Oops, not that, it's right here. Oh, he can uh, take. He could take uh, here. Yikes! Okay. Uh, miscalculation. Snapper. If I play here, takes, root takes, bishop takes, so that doesn't work. <coughs> Actually, here, there, yeah. Here, 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 there, there. I'll show you the line that we were talking that I was talking about when we get to this point here. There's a way that he can uh, continue if he plays here. We go, we go here. You can actually ch checkmate this way, or just checkmate that way. Either either way, one's a little sooner, so.
see, bishop takes, knight, if queen takes, then uh, we win the rook. So bishop takes d7. Am I missing something? What what can he actually do? Isn't that just a cleared piece? Yeah, I think it's just a clear piece, I know. So he's threatening mate now, huh? Can't, we really can't save the bishop, so we're gonna we'll have to um, basically win a put. We can win the pawn on e5, pinning the knight, and then when that takes, we just push g uh, g, and then he goes up, up. Yeah, yeah. We have to take the pawn here. save the bishop, huh? We would have taken here. He probably would have taken there. <coughs> and then went up, down, up, down, up, down. So the only way is to not have that happen is there. And then you take here. Queen d4. And now we just grab. Now we grab the pawn. Okay. Queen, Queen check, King d7, Pawn takes,
fish, uh, uh, pawn takes a five, a six. Ooh, the knight. Knight comes in as uh, that. That's what we'll do. We'll come in with the knight to come here. I'm thinking of playing Rook F5. Actually, the knight guards uh, C2, doesn't it? Queen there. We're threatening mate. Attacking here. Okay. Yeah, let's uh, finish this one first. We'll finish this and then we'll do it. Because uh, we want to, yeah. <laughs> uh, we'll do it. We will do it, I promise. I even have a Hakaro Nakamura game in, in the Blitz uh, World Championship. I even have a game where he played. 
So we're going to do a couple games tonight. Start implementing gameplay. I'm looking at potentially uh, queen uh, d4, queen d4 ideas. That that's, it attacks the knight and attacks the bishop at the same time, and we can we'll win one of them. What do you think? It attacks the knight because the rook's attacking the the knight, and the queen would be attacking the knight, and then the queen's attacking d1. So it's a double attack and we win material. And we're also, if the queen moves to defend, we're also potentially threatening checkmate here on g7. Queen d4. That's, that's my vote. What do you think? What do you think, Fox? What do you think, guys? Do you think Queen D4? Rook D5? But see, Rook Rook D5 is Rook D5 is a uh, Rook D5 is a uh, one move threat. Rook D5 is a one move threat. This is a two move threat. It's a fork. You give it a shot. There we go. Let's uh, go over Fox's game. We promised that we would do that. You have to go for the, um, uh, you have to go for moves that are they have like double. My teacher told me you want uh, two or more ideas behind each move, and uh, that's one thing he always asked me when I played games. What was the idea? If you can't give me two or more ideas behind it, then what what it is, he considered it a bad move. Unless I can give him two or more um, ideas behind the move. Because uh, he told me that a one move threat can be par uh, parried, taken care of. Okay, so what side were you... Um, oh. All white, gotcha. Okay, d4, d5. Oh, okay. We'll have to take a look at that then. Okay, don't worry. We'll 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 take a look at that move. Ooh, nice, nice. You did the queen, uh, the London system. Loving it. Good. Great play there. Love in the London. Except, uh, let me see here. Can he actually go here though? You'd have to play there to cover that. And then here. Hmm. I don't know. I don't. Before this move here, I would could create the pyramid. I'd play. Uh, yeah. I like C three. And then that allows you to have the ability to go knight D four. <coughs> Um, bishop e3 or potentially you can even play bishop b5 if you want to go a little hyper potentially you could actually play here this is a pretty hyper move as well you can't play there so he would retreat back at that point and then you can uh, potentially continue with your development c, uh, c4 See if you can't take scope on this, gain more space on the queen side. 
So like if he took, then what you can actually play here is potentially not even, don't worry about that pawn because it ain't going anywhere. Play there. If he plays bishop trying to hold on to it, you, you have e4 potentially with a fork coming down the pike. So not to worry. You don't really have to just automatically take. Like if here and you actually potentially have this idea too if, if need be. He would uh, retreat over here and then you have bishop, uh, queen b. So he probably would have to retreat back all the way and then we still keep with that. And if takes, takes, and then at this point we could play here. And I'm thinking that we're, we're getting ready to own uh, that pawn. We have a pretty good space advantage. And we control a large amount of space, so knight uh, c3. Well, I don't know, I might play knight f3 first, and then castle, and then and potentially he could actually try e5 takes uh, queen takes and then check we have that so he's he's in a pickle he's in a, he's in a problem so he can't he can't really even do that oy oy vey that's not it's not good for him maybe he'll try developing trying to go after that pawn Then the knight, this knight move then would make sense at this point. And if he tried hacking at that pawn, then we can just castle queenside. Now we have a rook um, on the queen, and our pawns are pointing towards the queen, but we're not really worried about that. He could, but oops, he can't play there. Sorry, that's that's a bad move. Delete that. Uh, if he tries that. And wham! In in comes devastation. Yeah, that that that's you see how how just a small a small change in the predicament can really throw a kink. Wow, I can't believe it. that. Wow, well, this that's interesting. He potentially probably should have traded and then left you with this setup here. And then. Uh, he probably would probably take with his queen and we would develop our knight and then now we have some central uh, squares we don't really have to castle at this moment and if he chose to castle queen side we can actually castle king side and then prepare bishop I mean rook b1 and see if we can't fling these get these pawns going up the board yeah that that's what grandmasters play. They move the the bishop back. Takes takes. Knight f six. Knight bd two. Knight uh, e seven. Ooh a four. Huh. Trying to um, challenge stop uh, his queenside expansion. Or get some queenside expansion because your uh, point uh, pawns are pointing towards the queenside. It's interesting how. Uh, both of your pawns, your pawns pointing towards the queen side and his is as well. So you know where the battle royal is going to be played on the queen side. Because both, both of your pawns are pointing that way. Your His is pointing that way, yours are pointing that way. So this is the side of the board that everybody's going to gonna do a royal rumble on right here. And that that's exactly why he that's exactly why they traded off was to try to get a um, majority nice yeah that, that this I li I like that move that's a really strong move because now you're connecting your rooks ooh sweet yeah you're going for a kingside expansion I'm a queenside expansion Nice, nice, nice. You're following the uh, principles of Jeremy Silman, where 
you're uh, where you're strong your pawns are pointing towards the queen side you're attacking so and this calls for that wow I can't believe that he um, he probably should have tried to somehow get a knight here okay, yeah yeah uh, yes this is coming down and somehow trying to rook over and maybe run the king I don't know that's that this idea is too slow way too slow I had probably have played if it was me queen uh, Well, was it fast enough? It was too slow. And if he tries this, you then you then have just a wham, wham. Thinking queen, um, queen here is best. Even if he tries this here, you have queen there. And if he tries to come up, you have the knight comes in. He tries there. You have it takes here. Oops, sorry about that. No, don't do anything with the board. Don't do anything with the board. Good. <laughs> Thought the board did something. And then check. Oops, you can't do check there. Let's see here. Trying to eyeball that. That's interesting for sure. Oh, wow. Right in the. Was this a blitz game? I think you have mate. A computer would want to grab the material, but I think you got mate here if I'm not mistaken. Oh, that's mate five, so this is mate three, okay. Nice job, nice, nice find there. That was excellent. So I guess I gotta check something. Thirty minutes, perfect. Okay, now we'll we're gonna go over a Hakaru Nakamura game. This is uh, from his Blitz in the World uh, Blitz Championship. 
he faced a 2641. Zer Torque opening. This is the Torque opening. He's known uh, for his blitz. He does his uh, that he does his fianchetto uh, variation with uh, in his blitz. Oh, one more. Okay, we'll check that out. What? So, what? What side are you? White or black? Oops, hold on, let me. Okay, you must have been white then. Okay. This is very rare when uh, black gets kind of a uh, uh, more of a French setup here. All, all we would need now is uh, potentially this type of a, a setup the other way around and we would have a, a typical French type of setup here. If this here. Then we have we have that setup. That'd be f kind of funny if we had that. <laughs> Yeah, he uh, he likes this opening. Cruz check does Alexander. Knight G four. Ooh wow. I don't know. I think I might have expanded on the queen side a little bit. Tried to get some uh, attack going. Because, uh, let's see here. This is a, this is who can get basically the position uh, ripped open the soonest. So, so potentially like maybe here. He might try something like that. And then you have a rook maybe that can come to an open file. Nice. He should have set up for that with this, but 
That was a mistake. That was a mistake. This, you probably should have tried that. That would have been a better uh, idea. Okay. Well, I think still you then can get your expansion going with an attack there. So maybe, maybe right away we can get an attack in. So if he tries that, Wow, this this was the equalizer. Nothing, okay. Yeah, it's funny that Naka played the same, uh, I think the same opening you, that you did, Fox. But you did the Indian, the old Indian attack, and he did the, uh, I think it's the La uh, Nimso Larson variation. This stops uh, Black's idea. See, Black wants to potentially play here. Uh, potentially. I don't know if that's actually kind of some of his idea. Maybe it's to actually play C5. Naka Mora played C4, castles and castles. So now he's got a bind on uh, D5. So let's, let's look at... Um, and the position's closed in theory right now. There's no uh, pawn openings. Everything is together for both sides. So it's it's uh, it goes back to Jeremy Stillman's pawn pointing. The pawn is pointing towards the <clears throat> the king side. Yeah. Yeah, he does English. And then d5, so he, so his opponent is trying to blast the center open. Kaboom! Wow, nice. Now, now Naka has the ability of uh, potentially e4, but that actually blocks everything up. So this was kind of a, a different move. He has to get pieces uh, flowing in. I understand. So they were good. Uh, they were good once. They were good bishops at one time, but now, nope. There we go. If you notice uh, what N Nocta did, uh, Steinitz has a rule. 
in, that if a knight has a spot that it can go into, you want to deprive it of that spot. It's the Steinitz rule. So Naka saw that potentially a bishop or a knight could go there to b4, so he played uh, a3 to stop the knight. And then he can kick the knight out with e4, uh, potentially next. And then see if he can't chomp, chomp the center and get his bishops good again. Oh, so he's uh, developing. That's actually good too. And but then that still prepares uh, e4 too as well. So if takes c takes d, knight takes d. Because we there's really no reason to take with the bishop. The bishops are snipers, and they love to be like in the woods or in buildings with little bitty holes that they can shoot through. Little bitty holes. That's that's their. Uh, that's their greatest desire is to be in like little loophole places, and so a knight, a knight's like heavy armored and he's he's got all that mail on and he's got his lance and he's like let's go. He's he's the one that you, that charges in and takes no prisoners. Knight c five. Now the rooks are connected. Uh, Naka's knights are really good. If he tries to play there, uh, Nakamura can actually bring his knight over to the king side or potentially down and then up, something like that. Ash, yeah, if I'm sorry, I'm wrong. If, if he plays there, Naka would just grab the pawn so he can't play there. So, my bad there. <laughs> Right there, rook a d one. Now he's got a rook on the queen. He can't play here because of. Hello, remember me? And then if the queen tries to like go back here, Naka could just implant his knight there forever, and it's like a a thorn in the side for indefinitely and potentially after maybe even with a trade here nope that doesn't work sorry I was thinking that he could potentially win a pawn here but I think that's probably best and then pre uh, potentially preparing e, uh, e4 yeah Huh? What? You, what? What? Hold on, let me see. E five. Knight f5. Yeah, I guess he would be losing, wouldn't he? Yeah, this and then here. The knight wouldn't be able to take because, well, maybe he picks up a pawn. Which is enough to win in an end game.
Achoo. Excuse me. That's that's why. That's why Naka took the knight rather than the rook. If you're wondering, it, this would uh, lose to um, this here, and I th I believe potentially maybe maybe bishop takes his no the knight that would lose a pawn, so queen would have to take. I still I still think it's losing, but. Why well, give your opponent any counterplay, right? Now he's going after this right here. Yeah, knock this going for the knockout. Loving it. Right here, and then he's got some attack coming on this pawn. Wow, that was a cool combination. Boom, there's there's our tactic. Wham. And then now, not, he can't take, oops, that's bad, that was the move. He can't take here because of mate, of mate. Keeping him neutralized. Do you see that? And now this is totally winning. Naka can just hold there. If he comes up here, how's he gonna? How's he gonna stop that? You know, look look at this. This is just like wow. And then if he tries something like this. You probably wouldn't want to give up your uh past pawn, so probably that would be a good move, better move. I don't know if there's any way to save this position. Because he's kind of like stuck. doesn't work.
Actually, he can't move off that. So he's probably a check. I think I think we're there's still uh, still winning here. Yanks. Yeah, you better be careful here. I think it's a draw. Wow, that, this would have been losing. Kaboom. Uh, we'll work on some puzzles now. That's that was impressive there. So you push, push, push. Push down. Hmm. Wait a second. So put no, we don't wanna let's see push, push, push. Yeah. Taking that first. Yep. Yeah. You got it right. Hold on, I'll be right back. I'll put on a, a, a non unrated one. And I'll be right back. We'll go over it. There we go.
Okay, what have you decided, Fox? Did you uh, put some moves in? Let's see. Let's see, let's see, let's see. Okay, G3. So G7, rookie one. I was thinking of potentially bishop um, uh, F5. Uh, G7, rookie one, and then bishop uh, F5. Uh, king. King um, B3 and then uh, Bishop E um, E6. That's kind of what I was looking at. I like the start of that though. So it's a draw at this point then. Yeah, that was not a good line. We made a mistake, but that it's a blessing. It wasn't rated, so. Uh, okay, let's now ha uh, hunker down and see what we can uh, come up with here.
First of all, I was looking at a potential F6 uh, check. That's, that was one idea. There's also bishop g4, rook takes uh, g7, f6, check. There's that idea. Uh, bish, now with bishop g4. Bishop g4. I'll have you guys take a look at that. I'll be right back.
Okay. Hey, how you doing? See F six, King eight six. Oh, yeah, you can. Uh yeah, if uh, yeah, if you have a game, we'll go over it. Oh, I I give I give all those. We do chess tips and reviews and all that. Well, that if you uh... okay, well, uh, we'll have to go over that. Uh, I'll do my uh, best, but with uh, analyzing, so. Let's see here. Oh, optimum, yeah. That's true. Let's see here, let's see, let's see, let's see. Oh boy, this one. This is a tough. Yeah. Yeah, it's fine if you post a leak. Not to worry. Let's see. Uh, oh yeah, that would work, wouldn't it? Yep, there we go. Let's see here. So I like chess.org. Okay. Let's take a look to see what we got here. Oops, got to turn off the engine. Okay. Nice. You good. I'm glad you do slow, uh, slow games. Are because those are those, you learn more. Uh, players learn more from. Uh, 
slower games than faster ones. Okay. So which side were you? Were you white or, let me see if you won. So, oh, you were white. So perfect. Okay. Gotcha. Okay. E4. <laughs> I kind of can see because you, you said that you won. So all I had to do was go to the bottom and I saw which side won. Uh, let's see. Okay. There, there. Well, on this line, you could uh, take, and let me see here. He probably would try something like um, this, because I've seen this been played. Well, you what what you could do is if you didn't if you don't like gambiting, you could always just. Uh, you know, you could take the pawn, and when he takes back, you can play uh, knight, and uh, then you have a pretty well-supported knight. Not well-supported, but I mean, you have a knight in the center, pretty, you know, attacking one. But I wouldn't turn down. You know, some players, you could actually, if you don't want, you know, to gambit and risk. Which, uh, if more of a positional player, this is more a positional line that if he takes, you take, and now you have more space. So if he plays here, you can start developing your minor pieces out, and if you guys just basically, you know, you do this, he castles, you castle, and if uh, you play here, he plays there, you can cement and basically have a game. You can uh, you can then see if you can't you know do some dominating of the open file more of it that's that'd be more of a um, uh, play that you would want to outplay if you're a better player the setup that I showed you was more of a who can outperform the other player in, in that line okay night night okay there. Well, he's re your opponent is really trying to zerg you. This is a pretty interesting zerg attack. G5. What now? Okay, let's see here. Since you have basically space on the queen side and your opponent has space on the king side, you're going to want to. He plays h5. That's about right. Maybe. Ooh, this is. He's getting a little bit intense here. I'm trying to uh, see if there's. Let me see here. Boy, this, he, he'd be getting a little bit uh, clobbering there, and I don't really like that. Let's see, if he played here, he'd play there, 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 and then you'd be back. Yowch, okay. Let's see, what what could we play here? Potentially, maybe that, and then if he, if he starts, you could bring a queen up. If he tries this, takes, takes, just to get your king to a safer location. He might, yeah, I've seen opponents try to zerg like that, and it's like, uh-huh, really, it's not really doing anything. Yeah, that's what I was... Whoa, that he um black made a mistake there. 
this was a this was a blunder. Black should not have done that. That that this was actually the losing move. Why not F three? Well, I guess you could. But is that is that what you want though? If your opponent's gonna shut shut down like the like black did like, to white, now now the the cool thing is you have a free hand on the queen side to do as you will on this. Do as the do as your uh, your your heart's desire basically. So queen uh, d two. Um, let me see here. I don't know. I think I would have tried to get, and he might try something like that. Then here. Then maybe there. Let's see here. Well, maybe not there. Uh, he might try taking. Yeah. But see, you have queen side space, and you might even want to potentially castle king side. I know it sounds crazy, but potentially that might be that might not be a bad idea because of how locked this position is. You, uh, you. This is kind of. I've really I've set up a position like this before, but. It's kind of hard for your for your opponent to break through. So let's see here, there, there, there. Yeah, this this uh, deserves a uh, almost close to a double question mark. This was his losing move. He should have tried to do something. Maybe, maybe rook. Maybe that's actually best for you. But try to make some pocket holes. Maybe maybe the mistake was actually here when he pushed. That might have actually been more of a mistake, because potentially best, and then maybe something like that. And you don't have to trade at this point. You can play there if he plays here. Maybe this would be better for your opponent, and then potentially he takes, takes, and if he tries there, maybe back and something in like that, you know. But I I think the start of your opponent's decline was uh, this push here. Even though it kind of binded up your position, um, your opponent doesn't really have any pieces out to counter that. And he allowed, uh, your opponent allowed you to have a free hand on the queen side. So that was the first mistake, question mark. Another question mark. This, that's an okay move. But I think I would have, uh, if it was me, I would have either played that move and then tried to get my majority going. Since this is a closed game, you really don't have to worry about castling. Because ca you want to keep your king more in the center. And... The, that's what you're going to want to do is play on the queen side, which would be probably to get your king here and then swing all the rooks over, your bishops over, queens over, and just stay there because there's no way he can take advantage of this pawn here. He'd have to do a Bobby Fisher trick, which I doubt that uh, he'd your opponent would be able to do, which would be to sack this bishop for this pawn. And then when you take back, your king would be like over here and there would be no rooks on the board, and then he can queen. That's like a Bobby Fischer uh, trick, but that's like probably 30 to 40 to 50 moves out. So I think black kind of bound the position up a little too soon. Um, I, you're actually better here. So b4, nice. Now, now that's, that's, that's perfect play now. Nice. Yep. Yep. There you go. Takes. So.
So takes, takes. Nice. Yep. That wins. Now you get to see that uh, this isn't uh, as he's your opponent when you played here and when he took there that he should have actually taken this way. This is the only way that that he could uh, that your opponent could hold, and then at this point you uh, you'd want to block it up, basically totally block it, and then. Uh, He'd have to play there. You bring your rook over, and now you have a post. So potentially, maybe best after this would be to come here. If he tries to stop that, you do have a knight coming in. And if he trades, now you have a. You're the one with a pass pawn. This is under attack. This is under attack and he doesn't have enough defenders to do anything and then that would just lead to a fork which would be a loss of material and this would lose that would be a that would uh well maybe this would be best in that line well then i'd play rook here and then he'd try tr probably try to lock down with the bishop and you'd have to then come in this way via If he tries, then you bring your queen in, and now, now you're the one. Now, do, now, now you see the power of when your opponent locked that down, and then locked that down. It was uh, almost game over. It was basically game over for your opponent at that point, because once once they locked the position down. Let's see what the end, a computer says. I just want to see. So, so it did uh, think the way I was thinking something like this. So it did think that way. It's still configuring as that best, but. I don't think it, I, this actually uh, loses, and so um, be now that this is locked down. There's no way he can infiltrate into your position. He could try that. And here, then when he when he played there, queen. There. Yeah. He's still surprisingly the engine prefers our opponent, but I don't know. I I don't th I don't prefer the opponent. I th I think it's I think it's actually winning for um, White here. That's just me. Yeah, finally the computer agrees with me. See? It's still configuring. Yeah, it's see it's winning for white. Not totally winning, but yeah, that that that's the only way that that you can actually hold potentially is drop a knight in there. Rook here. And why would you want to take his bishop though? That that Let's say take the bishop knight. Oh, I get it. Because of here. And then now you, you've you got that. And you, oops, not there, sorry. <laughs> Wham, there you go. Um, I haven't checked yet. Let me see. Well, we'll see what the computer uh, thinks. Yeah, the accepted one is actually best here. I think, and then you would, you can't really hold it. You you can't hold this pawn. It looks like you can. The whole goal behind the pawn 
uh, taking is this you gain time so you would want to then like develop and if if he uh, took back oops that'd be mate so he can't take back there so basically he would have to play bishop here I think probably taking yeah You'd be up basically a pawn one. So I think if I if it was me, I probably would take it. I'd probably take it if it was me. Just you know what? Why not? Me as Jeremy Selman would say and Ginger GM and Maurice and Yazer and Jennifer have them prove it you know what I mean take it if they're if they're willing to give you material like that in the beginning of the game take it and then say to say to your opponent what you gonna do you're gonna have to get that back you allow me yes you get to do one move but I get to develop so how are you gonna get it back and then then they, they come up they go here and then you bring your bishop in check. And then they play bishop there. You take. Queen if knight takes. Pawn takes. And pawn takes. You're up a whole entire pawn. He's got an isolated pawn. Now, you yes, he has developed one more developmental than you do. But you can easily get your pieces developed. Castles. And you're still up an entire pawn. So it benefits you to have taken in that line. That's just my opinion. That's what I would have done. So, but congratulations on the game. Well played. You know what? Keep up the good work. Keep uh, studying. You did great. Well played. Because you uh, used your uh, queenside expansion uh, wonderfully. You took advantage of all of your queenside expansion on on here so what a great a great game okay we'll go we'll do some more um, some more ta uh, tactics we we do tactics on here and games so if you see like a you can put in if you see an idea on here and we'll talk about it for in improving I do allychess.org or I, uh, yeah, lhs.org and chess.com. And I, we do have a, if you're wondering about our thing, we do have an account of tactics that are 2600 on lhs.org. But we, play, we uh, usually do chess.com because at a certain point, the um, tactics at 2600 level are more computer-like, which these are more human-like, so... That's why we kind of do these, so that we they kind of have more of a human feel to them, and they do come from uh, games on chess uh, dot com. So that's why I like them. Okay, let's see here. So do wow. Okay. So what well, I guess what I'm trying to say is you're more than welcome to contribute in with the puzzles. Let's see here. We're pinning the rook. We have two pieces that are attacking. Let me see here. Boy, I'm trying to uh, see because <clears throat> we can grab this rook, but 
he can run to f8 at that point. And we really, let me see, knight, knight takes there, knight takes, is that, is that checkmate? No, we lose the protection of that. Ugh. Snap. Wish we had a third protectorate for here. We, we would actually be able to mate, but... Well, maybe we can do the rook. Maybe rather than... Uh, um, the knight, maybe we can do the rook. Ooh, that would be interesting. Wow. So, ooh, I have an idea. Sweet. Okay, bishop takes f uh, f7 check uh, k if king f8 rook takes h7 if knight takes h7 then we have knight takes h7 mate that'd be mate so And if he tries doing the the king move, copy. If he tries rather than king f8, I will say h8. Uh, we can actually then play bishop takes uh, g6, uh, and now we're we're going for a big time attack. So I am gonna go with the bishop takes. Ooh, actually we got mate here. Even better mate. <laughs> uh. Let's see how we're doing. Oops, I got a little bit of that hair thing there. That's not, that's not good. Let me make sure my hair thing is better. Perfect. Okay. Because so I was kind of a little puffy there. Okay. Um, let's see here. We can pick up a uh, piece. With uh, bishop b7. Bishop takes f7. Check. Rook, uh, rook takes... Yeah, that would be a discovery. Hmm. Yeah, that that is that that is the that's that's candidate move. That is, we'll look at that. Um, that's that is an interesting move as well. See what we're what I was looking at to see is there's a potential uh, pin on the the rook and uh, queen. I mean the uh, queen to the rook. It's uh, and you can actually look. This is more of a uh, a checking idea, like what you're saying. That we'll take a look at this. That most definitely is a good idea. Yeah, exactly. Discover check. Rook takes um, f7. Uh, then queen e8. Uh, rook uh, f1. And then queen. Uh, f5. Uh, e5. Then. 
So, so potentially, we'd be in a slightly actually losing position, wouldn't we? Wow, we would actually, let me see here. Okay, we'd be trading off this for that, this for that, equal as well. Huh. So we should be there, there, there. Okay, now now that we've looked at that, we'll check the e, e move out now. So this is a, a, the bishop b7 is an, a, an idea. And it potentially does work. We do win some material on that line. So let's let's see the uh, d takes e3 uh, check. So king takes e3. We do potentially have rook uh, e8, uh, e, uh, e8, if bishop takes f7, then uh, king takes f7, and we're pinning the queen, so, hmm, uh, that's, that's an interesting idea, so takes, king takes, rook e, uh, e8, I might actually win a uh, piece in that line. Hmm. Interesting. No. That's that it's that that does uh, potentially win a it might actually win using a pin. Hmm, interesting. Uh, I do like that move. Great job on that on that find. Excellent, excellent, excellent. See, I'll show you my the other line. I don't think it works. And and you know what? I always uh, like what I say to my uh, my chess uh, friends. No suggestion my teacher told me is ever a bad suggestion. He could actually take here and take there, and then basic. We're basically in a drawn position, so that, was, that my idea would have been a draw. But the other idea is the best move. So never think that um, your idea isn't looked going to be looked at. We will look at it. Uh, my teacher always told me that we all start somewhere, and so I was like, "That's a that's a really good way of." Uh, looking at it. The grandmasters didn't get to be um, uh, super grandmasters overnight. They had to go through the same type of process that we we went that we're going through now. But they just they just endured through it and eventually they they uh, had that tipping point and um, they just sh shot up from there and they, they got it and it clicked it goes back to the Bobby Fisher that they just got good one day but it, it does take it takes a lot of work so it's not it's not like that um, lo uh, yeah Ooh, 
let's take a look at that. Okay, we'll finish this one up here and then we'll we'll take a look at that. Just one sec. We'll finish this puzzle up and then we'll do that. Oh boy, but oh boy, let me see here. I'm looking at uh, queen, uh, b8, b8 check. If king takes uh, b8, we have knight d7 check, king a1, then we have uh, knight uh, B, uh, C7, check, rook takes C7, and rook takes F8, check, rook uh, C8, rook takes C8, mate. There we go. Okay, let's take a look at that. Nice. Okay, let's take a look at this. Four, C five, Knight F three. Surprisingly, this is actually a strong idea. I kind of I prefer white in this line because of uh, his king uh, side uh, is better than blacks. This move, you don't want to react to their idea, even though um, here, here, and here. Look, it looks like you. Oops, sorry, that's the wrong one. Right there. This right, uh, it looks. It looked like you were gonna lose something. You actually didn't. You gained an, an advantage if they take that like that. Then you can actually potentially win a a pawn there. And he has this mass, but you have a better pawn structure. So like when what Jeremy Silman says, try not to react, uh, my uh, chess friends, to uh, your opponent's move. Uh, because what happens is then they're able, your opponent's able to push their ideas um, basically on you. They'll, they'll push their their will on you. 
and um, that's uh, Jeremy Soma says that's a sure way for a, a defeat because you no longer are uh, you uh, planning your own plan your he your opponent is doing their plan and you're reacting to their plan and then they're able to continue to push their plan push their plan but if you're if you had a plan you and maybe temporarily you had to stop your opponent uh, from doing stuff like if this queen b3 uh, move had more of an idea than just defending the knight it wouldn't have gotten a question mark and it, the problem with the move too is it puts your queen offside so potentially best if you were to defend with the knight and then still keep the pressure on the move potentially best would have been queen c2 because this still allows for for the queen to be activated on the b1 to h7 diagonal which uh, still gives your knight and your bishop some attack if you wanted to attack on the queen, uh, king side but the problem is uh, the position doesn't call for that the position calls for more of a uh, queen side expansion at this moment because that's what your opponent's going to try to do is like next probably go d5 and then try to get a pawn mass on the queen side. So if you wanted to defend the knight and you kind of didn't want to go into what the computer line wanted you to go into, queen c2 probably would have been a better idea because uh, at that point now you're threatening to win a um, a bishop with uh, a a set a3 so the queen would actually have to give uh, either play like this and then you can take back either with your pawn or your queen whichever one you preferred probably the pawn would probably be best in that line because well I guess you could do queen because then the queen could take pawn could take and then it and if if he takes you reconnect all your pawns so it all depends we'll see what the I just want to see what the engine says yeah so the pawn move was the best okay Yeah, if here that well, you still you still can play rook c uh, c one to guard this if you needed to, which more likely would be, um, and you're guarding here. Oops, sorry, he can't play there. You would uh, just pick up a knight. My bad. Yeah, I was reacting to my opponent's idea. See, see what happens when you react. You met, we even missed a good move. This that this was a good example of reacting to your opponent's idea. He, he's he hung a knight grab it if, if if he was to play that way rook c1 f5 yeah that this move right here I don't prefer that that's not a good move that that it's um, there's not enough pieces to a, a merit a kingside attack this is not a very good move I uh 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 that violates all of Jeremy Silman's stuff. Right. But see, an interesting move would have been to remember what remember what we're taught. If you get attacked on the uh, king side, right? I mean, on on the wing. What do you do in the center? You uh, basically go come. You explode the center. Basically, you go in and you you're basically a bulldozer or a wrecking ball. When if they're trying to wrecking ball you on one side, like on the king side, you wreck ball right in the center. Yeah, if he plays here, you actually have this. And now you're now look at yes you're down a piece but you have two pawns and look how wrecked your opponent's position is. You have to look at um, the position now, and still 
if you you still get a bishop you still get a bishop in that line like if here his bishop's still trapped and look at look at what what would happen he'd have to play there here 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 and look at look at this his position's wrecked your pawn structure is wonderful and you've just basically uh, annihilated the center and you're going to be going for he's got so many targets he's, he still has that target that he has to worry about potentially another one will arise he'll have oops he'll have that target so this was just um, too reactive again there was there was no uh, worry about about this because even if he played there you still have this move if he, if need be you're his uh, he's still trapped so it's it's hard to not react you have to actually train yourself I've been uh, reading Jeremy Silman's um, amateur's mind and I'm I'm close to being done with it uh, and I want to uh, I'm I'm starting this I'm really trying to retrain myself because even grandmasters Alakine faced a player that Jeremy Silman showed in his book and the player was a grandmaster and he still reacted he still reacted um, to all all of Alakine's threats he uh, his opponent didn't implement his plan he was reacting to Alakine yeah Yeah, exactly. We'll see. Let's see. Hold on. So a three. That's why you have to play this move first. You play d uh, d5 first before you attack the bishop. But good, you know what? Excellent play so far. You're holding uh, you're holding in there, and that's good. There we go. Boy, I was surprised like like he didn't take. But then uh, potentially you have uh, that. So did you play this? This is an interesting move. This move is like really cool. When you do t enough tactics, uh, play the grub. You'll uh, you'll start seeing these will just like pop out, cause this is like a, a beautiful tactic. It's like hello, and then if he uh, plays there, you can just first grab that. He comes there, and then you grab that, and it's like now where does the knight go? And if he goes there, you've already won two pawns. And it's so sweet. I I think I would have grabbed the pawn if it was me. I know he's I know you're thinking that potentially he can get that in. But really this uh that would kick the knight out and then when the knight moved back he well he probably wouldn't want to move there so we'd have to change that. And even if he moved here well that wouldn't be that'd be a bad idea cuz then if he moved there he, you win a there so so let's see maybe here and then takes but still you have this move so huh. I still like white Nice. 
nice, nice, nice. I don't know. I, I might have actually just played e4. And if he wants to play there, then you can just let him play there. But I don't know. I don't know if that's such a good idea. Probably takes, takes. Probably going to want to trade off there and then see if you can't get a uh, rook in, in implementation like that. I don't know if I would have... Uh, wow. What is he doing? He should, he should be trading. Then he's got that, I guess, maybe here. And then if he plays there, you can just, you can just grab there. It's got this passer. Wow. Very intense game. You don't want that. He'd have three. Ouch. That's not good. Potentially, maybe that is a better idea. How'd you get a draw? I thought this was uh, winning for black. This is a this the, oh was it a blitz? Was this a rapping game? Oh, you gobbled all the pawns. Wow. Yeah. Oh, so he agreed. Oh, okay. Alrighty, that sounds good. Wow. Yeah, I played a over the board game like that, and um, I I we got into an end game and uh, I was able to win. It was a pretty fun one. Okay, so do you um, have any questions on this? Okay.
Wow. Okay. Our, so, okay. Uh, you, so, no questions before I log off? You don't have any questions on, like, you guys don't have a... I can do one more game if you guys do have one, but um, it has to be a shorter one. <laughs> okay. Well, then I will say adieu. All right. Well, guys, I wanted to thank you all for logging on. Thank you for, for all the wonderful games. Thank you, Fox, for your two excellent games. And let me see. I want to pronounce your name right. Uh, Cram... 27 uh 72 cram 72 thank you and thank you play the grub for your game for that was, those all were wonderful learning and w they were great played games too so just keep pushing forward one thing we all have to work on is the amateur's mind of i even do it sometimes and uh, we're all working on it not reacting to our opponent's ideas we uh, keep pushing, we, we push our plan. Maybe we have to take a second or two to maybe stop our opponent, but we always keep on, on the goal of what our idea is. If it's a central attack, we attack in the center. If they're attacking on the side, sometimes we have to maybe move a couple pieces over there temporarily just to hold, but never, never get in the mindset of reactive chess. Because that's the mindset Jeremy Silman said of, of losing, and it's not. It's not. He, he says it's to all ratings. It's he because he even showed a game where Alakine played against a grandmaster, really popular grandmaster back in like the 60s, and I believe that that's the date. I may I may be wrong, <laughs> so well I'll just I'll just say back in Alakine's days. Okay, when Alakine was at his peak, I'll just say back then there were there were a lot of grandmasters like him. But there was only one Alakine, so we can't we can't say there were, were there there was nobody equal to his strength, okay? But but he the, his opponents started to react to his play, and they started getting into that mindset of, of spiral, like when a plane sometimes if if it goes down, um, like this, there's a way to pull out of out of it. You have to. It's it's interesting. We go against our nature. You have to push with it. Uh, that's what I, I was told, so I'm not, I'm not exactly sure to take me literally on on that. But you have to kind of go go with it for a little bit, and then you, and then once the once it's turned, you go right back to your plan, but never lock into um, basically reacting all the time. And like what Bruce Lee says, we have we have to know. Knowing is not enough. We must apply. Willing is not enough. We must do. So we have to keep that in mind. And there are no limits. There are plateaus, and we must not stay there. He also uh, phrased that as well. Bruce Lee did. So we have uh, acquired a new plateau of 2,200, and our next goal is 2,300. And we're just going to continue to uh, slowly approach up the ladder. We can do this as as a group. I know we can, and uh, just keep you know studying chess. Like what we all like. What I always say is. We have swords that we got to sharpen, our tactical swords. And we have to keep our eyes on the prize, which is the board, and keep our mind sharp, sharpened uh, in the Lord because he's the one that uh, gives us all strength and the ability to think. So we have to keep that. What our goal is is to leave behind information. Like I, I've been reading puzzles from Reinfeld. He, uh, he has uh, departed to be with the Lord, but his, his books still are out there for generations to enjoy. So when you, my chess friends, get a title, or a grandmaster, or NM, or whatever title, never, never forget to ever give back. Give back. Keep, always give back to the next generation, because that's a legacy that uh, you can leave. And even though you've departed to be with the Lord, you're able to leave something for the next generation. That's what I hope these, uh, you know, uh, recordings do is uh, help the next generation and you as well. Right now, my chess friends, 
to improve because that's what a teacher's greatest goal is for their uh, their students to actually surpass even where they are but you know what that's what my teacher uh, told me and so I take that to heart as well and you know what same thing with the Lord and we'll you know what like what we always say we hang up our coat we hang up our hat we sit down and study when most won't we do and that makes all the difference trust me when when everybody else is like playing like the I always think of the ant and the grasshopper when uh, when it's like maybe a couple months before the tournament over the board tournament and we're studying and you know some might be playing outside and doing the grasshopper thing I always I always uh, say we're studying and those ants were the ones that were prepared for winter so that's what matters we're gonna be prepared for our chess studies so as Wesley so says to the Lord Jesus, as I say, God bless, and I'll see you guys next time on Chess Cruncher TV. Have a blessed morning, afternoon, and evening, and the Lord will, and I'll be back on tomorrow. And we'll uh, strive to stay at 2200 and go all the way to 2300. Congrats on your guys' games. Great job. Keep pushing forward and never, never stop striving for greatness in the Lord and in chess. Be blessed. Go Team Chess Cruncher. Hoorah. And I'll see you tomorrow. Bye-bye, my friends.